Put this at the beginning. Been really obsessed with uh, old school karate sound effects lately. Taylor Jackson shooting 67 weddings last year. Taylor Jackson, welcome. So Taylor, you are well known in this community. You're an amazing photographer. Hello and happy Wednesday. I am here at the studio. Coffee, cheers to you. I'm here with my favorite cactus. I forget what I named that cactus in a previous video, but I'm sure it was inspiring and hilarious simultaneously. I'm here today to address a question that I've received quite often. Uh, I actually hate videos that start with, a lot of people ask me, and then they fill in the like question that they want to answer in order to sell you things. Uh, today, I am answering a question that I legitimately get a lot, and I think it's because it's a bit weird and a bit strange, but also simple and just curious. Um, so I have a couple of answers for it, and I'll get to them, but I will begin with the story of why I tape my camera. Uh, I was out in BC for a few shoots that you might have seen there on the YouTube channel. Um, that It's one of my favorite wedding shoots of all time. That was actually a style shoot that I just messaged my friend Stu and Diana. I was like, please, like I want content. I'm in this beautiful place, and I want to be able to come home with something of value and importance for my career, also personally, and create something for them that's awesome. And I feel like if you do all those three things on a trip, you kind of, that's kind of the trifecta of a trip, and you also get to see a new cool place, and I don't know, it's just cool. Travel's cool. I'll make a video about that eventually, about the benefits of just travel and what it does to your mindset um, that I think is very important. Anyways, back to the story. I was out there and I wanted to front mount my GoPro on my lens hood. So if you ever see the reverse angle of, of my GoPro rather than the over the top, um, I have a GoPro, it's the hat clip. It's the only use I've ever found for the GoPro hat clip because it's kind of a ridiculous attachment, um, but I attach it to the front lens hood and I point it back and I realized pretty quickly that if I was going to be using that camera angle, um, from that perspective, the Nikon logo was pretty much like this entire section of the screen. So I taped it out for that and it was also super apparent at that point that the Nikon logo was taped out. So I think that's when the questions kind of started. And uh, I claim to not be a photojournalist really. I'm, I guess I'm a blend of everything. I feel like wedding shooters are kind of a blend of every genre of photography, but I am by no means um, like a pure photojournalistic war photographer style person. But I do know that out in combat and active fire that a lot of photojournalists do tape their cameras off. And that is essentially to eliminate a contrast point that if I'm out there in the field and there's a bunch of gunshots happening and somebody spots this like black white little contrast, that's just a quick reaction um, to shoot your way. I am not out in active fire. Uh, at all. Uh, I am at wedding days where everything is nice and pretty most of the time. Uh, but I do feel that there's value in the fact that like, I feel like as a wedding photographer, you've probably experienced this as well, that you're painting around a room, like waiting to get like this awesome candid and you find the perfect candid. And as soon as your camera kind of like breaks into them, they're just staring right at your lens and they ruin everything. Um, this happens to me a lot still, but it does happen less when I have this camera tape. So I feel like people are still aware of your presence, but there's not this little white dot just kind of moving around in their peripheral vision. Um, especially if you're in a place that's like kind of just darker environment, it's very, very apparent, um, like inside cocktail hours, they see it across the room and it's something weird and out of place. Without that, I've just had slightly better success uh, on people just not staring directly at my camera whenever I immediately pan to them. So. Take that for what it's worth. This is untested, this is unverified. I have not run this through a scientific study, but it makes sense in my mind and it seems to be working better in the field. Um, I guess like my other strategy for candids, I'm sure I'll get into this a little bit more in another video. Uh, cocktail hour is the, the most difficult time for me as an introverted person, especially if I'm alone. If I'm with somebody else, like a second photographer, I feel like we can kind of just like hang out and shoot over each other's shoulders. I'm a lot more comfortable in that atmosphere, but really like as soon as like two or three people see me taking their candid photo, at that point I'm kind of like, I'm gonna leave the room now for a few minutes because I feel like I'm being a bit of a pest. But then somebody like Tim, who has a very outgoing, uh, extroverted personality. I believe he's kind of an extroverted introvert. You can go out and you can be social and talk a lot and then as soon as you don't want to, you just like don't say anything and you either get one or the other. Um, I feel like I, I can be the same way as well, but I err more on the side of just kind of the straight introversion. Um, I feel like if somebody makes eye contact with Tim, that's his opening to like walk over and be like, hey guys, can I grab like a photo of the three of you? And makes that like completely diffuses the situation. Um, I still freeze a little bit, even though I realize it's something that I should be working on as a professional. But my workaround for that, I guess, is to hire a human where my weaknesses are rather than just trying to like do everything and be everything to everyone. Um, I realize that it's a lot easier to hire a second photographer that can go out and do that during cocktail hour um, rather than trying to do it myself. And then at that point I feel like I'm just 
trying to do too many things and it doesn't feel natural and it's not really my happy place. So I would much rather hire somebody that's just awesome at that. Uh, same goes for business advice that if you, f if you feel you're an amazing photographer, but you just lack on the business side of things, it might actually make sense for you to form some sort of partnership with somebody who's actually good and wants to manage the business aspect of things. Um, there's definitely value in it. I think for photographers, a lot of us are kind of the lone wolf, uh, sole proprietor style companies, myself included, as well as my wife, Lindsay. Um, we made a conscious effort to do two different businesses because we realized that if we were the same person, one, we would be only making the income of one photography studio. Um, two, it's a little bit confusing, just like you kind of have to go with what the market is saying. And the market is saying that when you go to a photographer's website that you're hiring either that photographer or if you're going to a studio website, you're hiring just like a wide selection of people. And in our market here, there's not a whole lot of studios that are really well respected that have multiple shooters. So we couldn't really forge the trail of this new studio. It made a lot more sense for us to just separate our businesses and have two completely different brands and social identities and positioning and, and everything pretty much. So, and looking back, uh, hindsight is 2020. We made some mistakes, but I feel like that is kind of the correct way and we did the right thing uh, for this specific slice of the world right here. Um, I also got a new lens. This is the, what is it? The Nikon. 35 millimeter 1.4 G. This is not a new lens. So these lenses came out a long, long time ago and I've loved the 85 for a very long time. I never really saw the value in getting a really good quality 24 millimeter lens. I did that, I believe maybe the early last year. And just the fact that I can just shoot at 1.4 with a wide angle lens and get the background on, like it just creates a feeling of an image that you don't get from any other wide angle lens. But I did realize that um, specifically when I was doing the stuff that was in the off-camera flash video yesterday uh, that I was out in the field with the, the lightning and the dark sky and I really felt as though I was struggling with just the physical proximity when you're shooting a 24 at 1.4 and you're like this far from the couple. It just feels really weird and almost a little bit too invasive. So I thought that I would go back to the 35 so that I can be a little bit further away but still kind of get that wide angle feeling. Uh, so I got this, tried it at the wedding this weekend and I have definitely made the right choice. So um, if I'm shooting hybrid photo video coverage, I'm on the Tamron 85 and the Tamron 35. If I'm just shooting photo only coverage, then I am on my 35G and my 85G. Uh, I prefer these lenses for sure, but the Tamron lenses uh, just have VC in them, VR, so you can actually stabilize your footage, which is super important when it comes to actually shooting. So those are my differences. These lenses, a lot better quality, I think, and a lot better just in general feeling of the images. Not to say that the Tamron lenses aren't great. I do love them as well, but um, there's just something really special going on with these. So uh, I am investigating over the next couple of years and uh, I'll get back to you with that future review, just like I put up the D850 review. Uh, the review of this 35, it'll be out March, 2024. So I uh, look forward to that, put that on your calendar. Also, since we're sitting here, we'll talk about some more things. On August 1st, Introvert's Guide to Wedding Photography Negotiation, um, I have been kind of sitting on this knowledge, I guess, for quite some time, and I didn't realize how kind of important it was. As I've spoke to um, Introvert, it's a little bit different, I think, to be in the wedding photography industry. It's like, it's equally as good. You both, like both introverts, extroverts have strengths, weaknesses. But I would say when it comes to negotiation and uh, actually just like business things happening, face to face, person to person, it's very hard for an introverted person to get over that. Uh, I feel like I am very adverse to kind of conflict within that environment. So I have always kind of shied away from it. Uh, on August 1st in Patreon, so for Patreon members, you have to be a member over there. Um, I'm uploading my introvert's guide to negotiation when it comes to wedding photography. It's a longer title. I'll clean up that title a bit, um, make it a little bit easier. But basically the, the concept, the overall arching overarching principle of this is the fact that uh, you the good neg negotiation is invisible and you should not really have to like hard negotiate and if you are you're just not setting yourself up right in previous lifetime uh, previous moments of contact with the couple or the the commercial client or whatever and if you can free negotiate into the deal there's usually a lot less pushback uh, when it comes to anything. Obviously there's going to be outliers that every now and then somebody posted in the Patreon Facebook group that uh, they got some pushback on their contract and, and what do you do? Um, there's always gonna be outlying things like that, but for the most part, if you're able to really just kind of 
pre-negotiate and invisibly negotiate before you even sit down. This will all make sense eventually. Um, the, it's worked out the best for me. Also, the first of the month is the best day to join Patreon because Patreon does a silly thing and I want them to change it. Apparently they did and then they rolled it back um, and I didn't even see it. I wasn't part of the test group, but they charge you on the first of the month regardless of when you sign up on the month. So if you sign up on the 28th of the month and then it takes over to the first, you get charged on the 28th and then the first as well. So if you are thinking about joining Patreon, join on the first so you get the full month. Um, there's nothing that I can do, unfortunately, to fix that. Although I have emailed them three or four times now about it. So hopefully, fingers crossed that they'll at least give the option, um, maybe not roll it out across the entire board, but at least give the option to the people that want it because I think that's like critically important and the silliest feature that I've ever experienced uh, a business of that style not having. Um, the other thing is that I am leaving the Loop Deck giveaway open until I guess next Monday. Um, so if you join Patreon August 1st, I'm giving away the Loop Deck that I sat at this desk and used um, and I'll ship that to you regardless of where you are in the world if you win. And all you have to do is comment in Patreon with your favorite movie. Again, open only to Patreon members, but um, whatever your favorite movie is, let me know. And it doesn't matter what your favorite movie is as far as the winnings go, but it's nice to see. I'm looking for some new things to watch and it's kind of cool to see everyone's favorite movie um, that we all have similar interests when it comes to photography and business and we all connect in some way, but then also seeing kind of the across the board movies is really cool. So uh, that's all for today. That's all I have. A phone call with the client in a little bit. I don't know what we're going to talk about. Probably uh, weddings and whatnot. It's nice to have a new lens cap. It's been a while since I've purchased an actual new lens, but I couldn't find this one used um, in the local area because I guess it is a strangely specific lens. Also, I'm wearing my music bed windbreaker. If you're looking for music, head on over to music bed. I'll actually put a link in the description because um, I'm a music bed ambassador and I would say quality wise, their subscription content for content creators like YouTubers um, is I'm gonna say like 25 times better than any other competitor. They're, it's just like this, the songs are all amazing. Like there's no bad songs on there. I feel like all the other services, they're fine and great, but I feel like Musicbed is just quite a significant leap better. Um, so if you are somebody that uses a lot of music, specifically for a YouTuber, you can get on their subscription plan that is crazy affordable and uh, you can use all of their music and really amplify your videos. Cause I think the one thing that we overlook is um, just audio as people that come from a photography background into video space. Um, the concept of audio specifically just like miking and th there's as much to learn about audio as there is about video and it's just kind of overwhelming and you just kind of think you'll figure it out but really you won't. And I think just by having good quality music that's actually like EQ'd properly and like mastered out uh, really does just immediately amplify the effectiveness of your video regardless of what kind of video you're making. Hope you guys had a great Taco Tuesday. That was yesterday. Goodbye from my favorite cactus and I. I'll see you next time. Tomorrow actually for a full wedding day. Excited for that, right? New wedding day, new lens. And uh, we're back to the GoPro for tomorrow's wedding day. Uh, 360 cam, might need some more time when it comes to on-camera video. It's just like the, the usability of it in random lighting environments is very, very difficult. So if I'm out in the world in the center door ceremony, it's fine. As soon as I get inside and have any sort of movement, it really does become really kind of difficult to work with. Uh, specifically because I'm moving from portrait to landscape mode a lot. If I was just perfectly still all the time and only shooting landscape, I think it would be a lot better. But because of my movement, the way that it tries to stabilize is like you can, it feels weird. It makes your stomach kind of go like Ugh! every time it happens. So. Back to GoPro. See you next time.